Hello, everybody. I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, and we greatly appreciate you guys uh, coming on by and having a conversation with us. There is certainly a good bit to talk about in regards to the Yankees and their infield. Um, obviously, the Yankees are in a little bit of a predicament because they don't have a backup infielder, and not having a backup infielder is... A problem. I know Jemai Jones is having a pretty decent spring training, uh, and he's someone who could potentially make this team. I know that the Yankees are comfortable running three catchers at least for opening day. There are certainly uh, a lot of storylines that there that we're going to get to follow this upcoming season, or at least over the next couple of days, uh, in regards to who's going to be, who the Yankees could acquire, uh, who the Yankees are going to have make the team, and so on and so forth. But before we get into everything, make sure you guys like. Comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell if you haven't done so already. We greatly appreciate you guys stopping by and checking us out. If you're on Twitter, if you're on YouTube, you guys can check us out uh, on various other platforms as well. We have an Instagram. We have a TikTok. We have a Facebook. Uh, and if you're not on Twitter right now, if you're on the YouTube, we have a Twitter. If you're on the YouTube and you're not – if you're on the Twitter and not on the, on the YouTube, we have a YouTube page as well. Uh, and we'd appreciate if you guys uh, gave some love to both. Uh, we also have Fireside Bets going for us, and Fireside Bets is a kind of a new project we have going uh, to kind of have some more betting content. We're doing our first day of the ladder challenge, and that those lines have been posted earlier this afternoon. It, from my understanding, the lines have changed a little bit, so uh, that play is no longer accurate to where it was when we first posted it. But if you guys want to follow along and just see how we do, we're trying to turn that ten dollars into ten thousand dollars. So uh, wish us luck there, but. We're going to talk about what you guys are here for, and that's the Yankees and their infield situation. And James Jenkins goes, I was the first to say they should pick up Tim Anderson. Nobody wanted to listen. So Tim Anderson was looking for a starting job, uh, and, and I don't think that the Yankees were going to uh, ever sign him because he wants a starting job. And the Yankees were not going to offer him a starting job at short. Uh, they were obviously not going to offer him a starting job at second, nor do I think they would have offered him a starting job over LeMahieu at third. The LeMahieu injury is a foul ball, freak accident, late seat, late, like late, late spring situation. Anderson are already signed at that point. I'm not holding this against them. Who comes up with this crap? Fake news. Uh, I never said the Yankees traded. Uh, I never said the Yankees traded for him. Uh, I'm, I, I will make sure uh, that the, I mean, I, I could double check that the title yeah, the title says, should the Yankees trade for an infield? Not the Yankees have traded for an infielder. Uh, but I'm sorry if that was misleading, uh, and I'll uh, do better in the future. <sighs> trade for Gio Urshela if the Tigers can't give him playing time. I like Gio when he was a Yankee. He was a good hitter. I was not happy when they bought Josh Donaldson. Uh, Gio was better than Donaldson. He's currently under contract with the uh, Detroit Tigers. I know that Brian Hoke floated out there that the Yankees could trade for Gio Urshela. I, from my understanding, that was a uh, you know more of a floating an idea out there. Not something that the Yankees are likely to do. Um, I, I think the Tigers want to hold on to Urshela. There's a reason why they signed him. Um, and at this point in spring training, I mean, it's like he's having an amazing spring training. I would be okay with the Yankees not signing him or not trading for him. Furthermore, uh, the Yankees don't really have a lot that would entice the Tigers. If you're looking at like bullpen guys, the Tigers have a pretty good bullpen. Their bullpen last year was one of the better bullpens in baseball. Uh, I could pull up their bullpen ERA right now, but that's not necessarily a... a, a um, poor part of their roster actually no i might i no i do i stand corrected oh they had a 4.16 bullpen you're right okay i do stand corrected their bullpen was not as good as i remember uh but their bullpen isn't bad i mean i guess they could use extra depth that's always um I mean, they were their fifth and win probability added so their bullpen was pretty good in clutch situations at least um i don't think that they're going to be trading urshela for reliever because i don't think there's a desperate need for one in their bullpen compared to the desperate need to maybe have extra infield depth right like the tigers have a poor offense they would likely like to have as many options at third as possible i know they have andy abanez i know they have zach mckinstry and matt veerling who could all play third uh but having depth for them is important just the same way that we uh, having depth for us is important so the yankees are getting put solano Where did you see? I where Passan? I don't I don't see that from Jeff Passan. Oh, am I getting trolled right now? I'm gonna be so mad, you guys. I mean, I'm not really gonna be mad. Laj, your season is on the line, buddy. Your season, yeah, yeah. He did not. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing on here. Your your season's on the line, bud. I, you're banned. No, you're not banned. You're good. Uh, but come on, man. It's fucked up. I I was I didn't have Twitter open, so yeah. You're come on, man. Like you, you got me for a second there. I was kind of like, no way. Cause I was going to say, cause I know that somebody mentioned Sosa here. That's also, um, Solano here. 
Donovan Solano has not played any spring training games. I highly doubt the Yankees bring him in to supplement their third base role right now. Maybe they sign him down the road. Maybe they sign him if LeMay has a more serious injury. Uh, but the Yankees are not going to sign him to fill out third base for them right now because he's not ready for that. Sup, everyone? Uh, hey, Donnie Clark. Yes, trade Sosa, what I thought. So I want to give credit to Bobby Malone because Bobby Malone kind of put this on my radar, and I think this makes so much sense. And Mundo Sosa is a guy who, you know, not that the Phillies don't want him. The Phillies would likely love to continue to have Edmundo Sosa. He is a valuable bench piece because he can play good defense all over the diamond. Um, but having the performance that they've saw, that they've gotten from uh, Scott Kingery, who was a former top prospect in the organization, um, I, I think that he could potentially have carved himself out a role in spring training. Um, I know that he's somebody that has kind of always had good spring trainings in 2000. Actually, no, this is not true. This is best spring training performance. So perhaps that isn't the case. But I think that the Phillies could consider it. They have Whit Merrifield. He's kind of a utility guy who could help them as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Weston Wilson is also on their 40-man roster. Uh, he was optioned to AAA. I wonder if the Yankees explore maybe getting Weston Wilson. I would love a deal for Weston Wilson because he is a valuable infielder who can help you. And, you know, I'm not saying he's a stud, but he can play shortstop. He can play third base. He can play first base. He can play second base. That would certainly be of benefit to the Yankees. He's right-handed. He's kind of playing all over the diamond. He had a pretty strong spring training, high strikeout rate, but uh, you know there is some speed tool here, and I think the speed's important. He can also hit for some power. It's kind of a the type of guy that I think the Yankees would trade for late in the season. Has uh, two minor league options and is a super utility guy. So I think he's someone the Yankees could look at. And Donnie Clark says, what's up? Matt Tomo says, what's up, Matt? I hope you're having a good day, my man. I appreciate you stopping by, saying salute. Salute to you, my friend. Ron Marnaccio and Ben Wartfett for Gio Urshela. So the Tigers already have a backup catcher in Carson Kelly, who was a former top prospect for the St. Louis Cardinals, who um, the, uh, the they traded, I think the, the Cardinals traded into the Diamondbacks, had a good year with the Diamondbacks, kept dealing with injuries, then was kind of bounced around from different locations and is now shored up with the Tigers. They have Carson Kelly, uh, not Carson Kelly, excuse me, Jake Rogers as their starting catcher. He's a pretty good starting catcher. So I don't think the New York Yankees would... Um, I don't think the Yankees are going to be enticing the Tigers with Ben Wortfett, especially because Wortfett doesn't have options. I don't know why the Yankees didn't trade Ben Wortfett. He's out of options. Probably because other teams thought that he isn't that good or that the Yankees are going to cut him anyway, so they didn't give them anything to like. Trade for Sosa, maybe Dominguez to lefty like Soto, uh, Gregory so to lefty pitcher like Gregory Soto uh, for Ben and top 25 prospect include Cash. We're not getting um, Sir Anthony Dominguez and we're not getting uh, Gregory Soto. Neither player will be on the New York Yankees. The Philadelphia Phillies will keep both of these players. So I don't think that's happening. Yeah. Um, who is this guy in the Phillies? What? Who trade for this guy in the Phillies? Uh, the guy I'm recommending is is Edmundo Sosa, a, a, a kind of a lower can, lower like a sneaky candidate for for a job for. Perhaps could be uh, Weston Wilson, who has some pretty good power and I think can be a competent major league hitter. Uh, not a good one, but like a competent one. And he, he's pretty fast. So, and he's versatile as well. So, I think he could be um, of use to the Yankees. He's a guy who I think can hit lefties pretty well, um, if I'm not mistaken. And I like a guy who can at least do something for you. You maybe can hit him against lefties, hit Cabrera against righties, or something of that nature. I'm not necessarily sure, but you know, I think he can help your bench and give you some uh, added depth. Gio will probably be the best trade route and willing to, won't take much to get. I just don't think it's realistic. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, yeah, I don't, that's where I'm at. I said the side Donovan Solano before I wanted Donovan Solano as well, but at this point, I think that time has kind of passed as well. we'll get more playing time now. Yeah. This is a big time for as Cabrera. So, um, he's been working on, uh, you know, his leg kick. I think that his, his leg kicks kind of got turned more into a toe tap. I posted about that earlier today. Uh, if you guys want to check out that tweet, I'll have an article about it tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah, I think that, you know, Cabrera is somebody who could really help the Yankees. And this is kind of his last chance to really step up and be a guy for this team. He can either be a career minor leaguer or a guy who um, is, or, or, or a career utility guy, or someone who really helps this team and takes on a bigger uh, role with the New York Yankees going forward. Uh, moving on a little bit here. 
Yankees and Solano are finalizing a deal according to Passan. Again, that's not true. Ryan, I thought the Yankees should bring up Durbin. Caleb Durbin hasn't played in AAA yet. Uh, I imagine he will get to dub, dub, uh, AAA at some point during the season, if not open the season there. That has yet to be announced, so we do not have confirmation on that. As it pertains to what he can bring to the table, his contact tools are great. He's a low strikeout guy. Um, his speed tool is excellent. He is a great solo base threat. His game power has definitely improved. I've been encouraged by the strides he's made on that front. Um, and I've also loved just his his batted ball profile. I mean, he's a guy who's hitting the ball a lot harder than I thought he would be. He's a guy who lifts the ball in the air a lot more than most people expected. He has been a lot more impressive than people have given him credit for. Um, and Aaron Boone has raved about him. In an article uh, with the New York Daily News done by the great Gary Phillips, who was on this podcast over the offseason uh, for an episode, he taught Aaron Boone gave a quote regarding just how much he likes Caleb Durbin's game profile. He thinks that Caleb Durbin will be a major leaguer. So, you know, if you ask me what I think will happen, I think Durbin will be somebody we see during the season, perhaps like we saw as Waldo Cabrera towards the tail end of last year or not last year uh, of 2022. It depends on what the Yankees infield needs are. Durbin Vivas, Caleb Durbin, both guys to look at. Now, Durbin isn't on the 40-man roster, but he will be Rule 5 eligible at the end of the year. So I don't think the Yankees would be scared of putting him on the Rule 5 roster, knowing that they'll have to do so at some point within the, the calendar year. So he uh, – no, that, that's not true. So annoying that this team always seems to enter the season with an incomplete roster. No left fielder last year, missing infielder this year. It's definitely discouraging to lose two third basemen. Your reserve third baseman, that's Oswald Peraza. Your starting third baseman in, in DJ LeMahieu. Hell, you lose Jorbin Vivas to a facial injury. He got hit in the face with a baseball in batting practice. So, um, you know, it's a little bit concerning that the Yankees are kind of going down with these injuries. Now, two of those three injuries are kind of, I, I guess you could argue, fluky injuries. Um, because, I mean, how do I put this? You can't really blame the Yankees for a, uh, DJ LeMahieu fouling a ball off his foot. You can't blame the Yankees for um, Jordan Vivas getting hit in the face with a baseball literally on the last day of spring training in Tampa, unfortunately. But as you meant, but but at the same time, I don't want to discredit your point because I have viewed third base as a weakness for the Yankees even before LeMahieu was hurt. I want the Yankees to sign Matt Chapman. And I'm not saying that you guys needed to believe that Yankees should sign a match, should have signed Matt Chapman. But kind of my sense of it was I didn't think third base was complete. And I think the Yankees definitely dropped the ball by not addressing the position. We'll wait and see how the Yankees kind of go from there. But not getting a third baseman, I think, will be the one move they didn't make that we look back on and go, you know, like we'll be like, damn, like, why did we not jump on this opportunity? Why did we not go out and make this team better? Why did we not go out and make that improvement? I hope that the Yankees can get, you know, better production from third base than I perceive, but I do not feel good about posi that position. I didn't feel great about it entering the season, and these two injuries have obviously dampened that severely. Durbin is a bulldog kind of player. Yeah, Caleb Durbin, I've only heard, heard good things about him. We actually had him on the podcast, and he is a great guy to talk to. It was a great interview. It was a great conversation. He is a really smart baseball guy. He understands how to talk about baseball, not just in the analytical sense, because he has a good grasp of the things that make for a good ball player, uh, but also in the sense of just being a strong communicator. Um, you know, he talked about the importance of a strong clubhouse. We talked about kind of having a chip on your shoulder uh, and what that entails because he came from a Division three school. So, you know, there are a lot of really fun conversations to have about that. It was a very fun podcast. You guys should definitely check it out. Um, I can't link it in the description right now because we're live right now. Uh, but if you guys want to check that out, you guys should certainly do so at the end of this live stream. It was a really fun podcast, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. What would a trade for Sosa lefty pitcher look like? Sosa, I don't think it would be Ben uh, Ben Wartfett for Edmundo Sosa. I think maybe the Yankees trade a reliever. Again, maybe a Ron Marinaccio would make sense for an Edmundo Sosa. But I uh, I really do think Sosa makes sense for the Yankees. Now, Weston Wilson's another guy who I guess makes sense. I They just need somebody to help them in the infield and give them more depth. They are not going to get a stud. They're not going to get a superstar. They're not going to get a starting caliber player this late into the season. What they could get, however, is somebody who can just kind of steer the ship for a little bit and give them some support because they're definitely going to need it. Um, I like Cabrera at third base. He's all right. He's a good defender there. I prefer him at third over, uh, having, I mean, and I know that this, you know, some people, this doesn't matter, but to me, this does matter. I prefer having Oswaldo Cabrera at third base 
over having Kevin Smith at third base because I know Oswaldo Cabrera's glove is a sure glove. He is a good defender. He is a smooth fielding defender. And I think that's super important when we're talking about uh, the infield and just kind of staying afloat. You hope the offense can give you enough with guys like Soto, Judge, Stanton, Rizzo, Torres, people of that nature. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I think that you're just kind of hoping for the defense to be there. And that's really it. Uh, hi. Yeah, what's good, Jeffy? Hope you're having a good night. Nelson Cabrera, I said, will be all right because he's a Swiss Army knife. I think as long as he's just playing the infield, I'm pretty happy. As well, Cabrera has an opportunity to get more playing time. It will turn out to be a really good player. I think if he can convert his... Um, you know, I think if the Yankees can convert Oswaldo Cabrera into a quality infielder, that would certainly help. I think the New York Yankees have a really, like, interesting player here. And end of the day, I, I've always wanted to believe in Cabrera. I love Cabrera. I think he's a strong player. And, you know, end of the day, I, I believe the New York Yankees are going to have uh, an interesting situation on their hands if he's able to step up. And that would certainly help the Yankees uh, as they try to navigate through the season and figure out what their infield alignment is going to look like. Waldo reminds me of a Ben Zobers type of player. That's the hope, right? That's the idealistic outcome. Devontae Adams burner goes. Prediction who homers for New York on Thursday. Considering it's Framber Valdez, a left-handed pitcher, I love John Carlos Stanton to hit a home run that day. I think he's red hot, and I think it'll work. What's the scouting report on Edmundo Sosa? So let me uh, Edmundo Sosa StatCast, if I can pull up StatCast. Um... I'm trying to pull it up now. I apologize, guys. It's very loud keyboard typing. I have a very loud keyboard. I have a gamer's keyboard, even though I don't play games anymore. Um, I do play some games, just not like, like I'll play, I still play a Clash of Clans, but that's not really a computer game. Edwundo Sosa ranks in the 93rd percentile in sprint speed. He is a versatile defender with good range, not a great arm. Um, he isn't a very powerful hitter. He's more of a like, you know, he, but he does have a high strikeout rate. Uh, but he's a very high sweet spot percentage. Um, he has good raw power, but doesn't really ever translate it to results. He is a right-handed hitter. He is somebody who I think, you know, could help the Yankees kind of all over the diamond. Um, he's a good base runner, good defender at shortstop, particularly has become a better defender at third base. He's one of the better defensive players in the league. And I think he's even played some left field. I think the Yankees can certainly utilize him in a second, third short role kind of allowing him to be primarily on the left side of the infield where they don't have a lot of depth. Um, let's see. Ron Duffy says, hi, what's up? Yeah, people said to trade for a rise. That ship has sailed, just like trading for Lizardo. Yeah, and I don't think a rise is going to ever play third base for them. I don't think that he was ever going to play third base for them. So that's kind of where I'm at there. Um... I would love to get a Norman Gorman, Nolan Gorman, who would be a great fit at Yankee Stadium, plus the versatility at second and third base. I agree, but I don't think the New York Yankees will ever get Nolan Gorman. I think that the St. Louis Cardinals view him as a cornerstone for their franchise, as they should. He is a really uh, good hitter. He's not so much a great defender, but he can certainly hold his own at second base now compared to years past. He was a straight-up butcher there. Um, I like Nolan Gorman. I, I see all the reasons why you like him. I love him. I think he's a really good hitter. Uh, but for all of those reasons, the St. Louis Cardinals will also not be trading him. Uh, he has dealt with some injury stuff. That's, that's obviously hurt him, but he's able to hit lefties and righties. The Cardinals are not trading him. I think he's somebody who the Yankees um, will never get their hands on, at least in the trade market, or at least for right now. Who could they get in a swap for work vet? Honestly, I'll take anything for, uh, you just kind of want to clear the roster spot almost. I'm okay with just clearing the roster spot because again, nobody the Yankees are going to get at this point in time is going to really help them. I wonder what the Yankees end up doing. Like, I don't really know what's going to happen because I don't think anybody saw the Yankees. Um, I don't think anybody will, anybody saw the Yankees trading for Jose Trevino. I don't think anybody saw the Yankees trading for Mike Talkman. Those things just kind of happened, right? So, um, you know, I think that the Yankees will just kind of trade for somebody and we'll see who it is. We didn't see Franchi Guadero on the radar until he signed. So, yeah. Yeah, true. Good point. Can't do anything about those injuries. Correct. But I still think there's a lot of credence to your point that the Yankees didn't do enough to address third base. Other sneaky pickup is Patrick Wisdom. In my, I think in my opinion, he's good for us. Play other positions. Look, Patrick Wisdom is a starting caliber third baseman. I don't think the Cubs are necessarily willing to trade him, number one. And number two, he's going to open the season on the injured list with a back issue. So the, not only will they not really entertain trading him, in my opinion, but the Yankees would not benefit from having him right now because the moment in time in which you desperately need him, he's going to be hurt because he's currently opening the season on the IL. Dealing with a back issue, 
Third base isn't a great position for him defensively, or at least it has been over the last two years. I know he can't play some first base. He can technically play some outfield, though that's being very generous to say he can play the outfield. He's played center field. Good God. The Cubs have kind of played him everywhere. But I don't think he will end up a New York Yankee. Boone and Osmus really like Durbin as well. Yeah, you're right. Brett Osmus, also in that same article, um, had the same thing to say about um, Caleb Durbin. You need a few more of these fiery players, Ryan. Well, you're going to love this upcoming pro- crop of prospects because, you know, the New York Yankees are um, – the New York Yankees are in an interesting situation where their farm system is really fiery. They've got a lot of guys, a lot of competitors down there, and I'm certainly excited to see how the Yankees navigate from there and 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 how the Yankees kind of start bringing these guys up and, and you know, kind of grooming them for major league roles. So, Yeah. Could trade Canley as well. I do not think they'll be trading Tommy Canley. Could sign Elvis Andrews. He's had a really bad spring training and he's old. I'm kind of out on him. Who will be our backup first baseman? Rizzo gets hurt. Um, Ben Rice. It, it, it will be Ben Rice. I think Ben Rice is the most logical answer for that choice. Da- David Jones could play first base. Spencer Jones could play first base as well. No, I don't think they're going to ever play him at first base because he's such a good defensive center fielder. I think Rumfield and I think uh, Rice are two options. Yes, you mentioned Rum. Rum I know you mentioned Rum. Yes, Rumfield is an option for sure. I, don't, I know he didn't have like a balls to the wall spring training, but I still view him as a positive contributor on this team. And I think he's somebody who can help because the underlying metrics in double A were pretty enticing. Yep, they can play first and a strong first baseman. I don't know why they just signed, don't just sign Donovan Solano. Again, he will not be ready for opening day because he has not played during spring training. Solano, Steve said the same to sign Solano. I wanted to sign him and I still would like to sign him, but he will not help us right now. So we needed to think about an option that can help us right now. Okay. Ben Brandon, Brandon Belt, minor league deal if Rizzo gets hurt would be smart. Yes, but the issue is he just doesn't play anywhere else. Like you can't throw him at there's not even like a like, oh, he can kind of play third. He can only play first. He's left, he's also lefty thrower. So he can't like you, even if you wanted to get cute with it, you actually couldn't throw him out there. Can't play the outfield anymore. That ship has sailed. He is 35 years old. That ship has sailed. I would love him on this team because he can fucking mash, but he also would not be ready for opening day. So yeah, there's that. I would love to see Tyler Wade as. Third, he's on the Padres. He has made the, the Padres. He's on the Padres. So, and he's, you know what? He had a good spring training. Oh, no. Yeah, he's he's in he's in AAA. Uh, no, he's not in AAA. He's, he's with the Padres. Look, I uh, I don't think he's good. I've always put that out there. I have never believed in Tyler Wade. Tyler Wade had a 151 WRC plus in spring training back in 2022. Tyler Wade had a 117 WRC plus in spring training in 2019. 129 in 2017, 114. Like, I'm good. I don't buy it. I don't think he's that strong of a player at this point in his career. Uh, and I am good on Tyler Wade. So, yeah. Brian, we have a really deep farm. Yeah, we have a deep farm. The Yankees have a strong farm system. And I think that they'll get better as they continue to kind of have these guys shuttle through the minor leagues. Can't wait for Hampton and Lillane. I agree. I love Chase Hampton and Henry Lillane. Those are two extremely exciting pit, uh, pitchers who could come up through the organization and, and give the Yankees some much needed depth if they were ever need it. Easy. We'll be wondering who, who we want to get in rid of when Martian returns. It's a long season. We can't fall back while Cole's hurt. Our main problem is pitching, pitching and pitching. Uh, yeah. Our biggest problem is pitching, but I don't foresee the Yankees addressing it right now. I think that it would take a number that Montgomery will not fall to for the Yankees to sign him. And if he were to fall to that number, I think other teams, including the Boston Red Sox would be interested. So yeah, heel ERA prediction, uh, three, nine, three, nine. Whether Brian Cashman moves on f- from the Yankees, what are your chances that you take his spot? None. I, I being a GM is a very stressful job that I would never want to take. <laughs> I'm sorry. I told people, look, the Yankees were never going to sign to Anderson. You want a starting job. Uh, David, the pitching concerns me as well. Yep, pitching is a concern. Pitching, I'm not going to lie and say it isn't. More options like Andy Abanez or Jace Peterson, I think, are good. Would it be bad enough for us to help? Uh, so the Tigers are likely going to roster Jace Peterson. Uh, not Jace Peterson. Um, Andy Abanez after the spring training he's had. You see how old Jake Cave looks? Yes, he looks extremely old for some reason. Just joined the William Damas is, uh, to New York Yankees. Uh, it's an overly optimistic bandwagon I'm on. 
I would love this for the Yankees. I think he would make so much sense. Like I would be all in on this. I just don't think the Yankees are going to part ways with what it would take to land him this late into spring training, but I would love it. Lillane looks like a young Yankee, Yandy, uh, Yandy, Randy Johnson. He looks really good. Like he, he's got a nasty changeup, good breaking ball. He's a really strong pitching option for the Yankees down the road. Won't be somebody the Yankees look at in the next year or two though. So yeah. Ryan, we haven't gotten this, had this deep of farm since the 90s. I'm pretty sure 2017, we had a pretty deep farm. Uh, I think that was like the year you'd look at as like the benchmark. Uh, now the Yankees player development may not have been as good as it is now. Actually, it probably isn't as good as it, it wasn't as good as it is now. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to kind of, you know, gauge how good the farm is going to be because in hindsight, we're going to look at, um, in hindsight, we're going to, it's going to be a hindsight thing in about five years. We'll truly know how people perceive this player development. I think that Will Warren should have gotten the fifth spot over Luis Hill. I think it's was close. I think it could have gone either way, but since the Yankees didn't have an innings cap for heel and since they're carrying Clayton beater, I think you can justify the decision. I'm fine with it. Luis seal pitched his ass off in spring training. And let's be real here. He did out pitch will Warren. And this is coming from a guy who loves will Warren. I understood the decision. I don't think the decision was a bad one. I don't think the decision is a, is the wrong one. I don't think there's necessarily a wrong decision. Um, and if something goes wrong, they could always decide to change your mind during the year and just move heel to the bullpen. He belongs to the pen. We'll see. We'll see. How warm is Boone's seat? It's a good question. Like, I, I guess, like, what would it take for Aaron Boone to get fired is a really good question. He is on the final year of his contract, or I believe there's an opt-out. So, you know, that's definitely an interesting conversation. I think, um, I think they'd have to miss the playoffs. I think if they missed the playoffs, for sure, he would no longer be um, the manager of the New York Yankees. I think if they got bounced in the wild card, maybe he wouldn't be the option for the New York Yankees. But I think it kind of just comes down to like what the players think of Aaron Boone because what they think of, of him matters probably significantly more than what the media thinks of him. And I think that's an important distinction to make kind of as we go on into the Aaron Boone tenure uh, into the tenure of other managers um, as well. Tim Anderson. Yeah, no, Tim Anderson wasn't going to happen. I really like Arias from the Orioles. They got a surplus of infielders. They have to move on from soon. Could see it with Holiday as well. Yeah, so uh, Ramon Arias is a guy I would love the Yankees to pick up. Um, I think he made the team, and I'm pretty sure he's starting on the team right now, and at least until um, at least until a guy like Holiday gets back. I kind of you know think that Arias is going to have a pretty strong year because he's kind of always been a, a solid player in this league. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, if let's be real here, if the, um, if the, how do I put this? If the Rangers were to trade away, not the Rangers, the Orioles were to trade away, um, Ramona Rios, you'd assume something's wrong with him as well. And I think the price tag would be a lot higher. They have James McCann. James McCann is a, a strong backup catcher for them because he can play good defense. Actually, I mean, it's not really that good of a defender. I guess you could argue Ben Wartvet would help them. I don't know how much they're playing. They're paying James McCann. I guess you could do like a Ben Wartvet playing. Like James McCann has had a brutal spring training. You bring in Wartvet. You have Wartvet kind of. Yeah, you know, I could see this. I could, I could totally see this. Like Ben Wartvet, not for Ramon Arias because Ramon Arias is considerably better. Um, but I could see it. I mean, maybe Jorge Mateo. They just signed Tony Kemp. They they clearly wanted an, a reserve infielder. I think they'll just keep. Um, I think if anything, they'll keep. Um, they would just keep a guy like Ramon Arias, uh, just kind of it, on their bench for depth because you can never have too much of it. Um, Arias, yes. Um, Roderick Arias is one of the best players in that farm system. He's a talented guy. Diehard Yankee fan, but we're gonna finish in last place. We're gonna suck this year, last place. There's no chance we finish below the Red Sox. I'm just gonna like. I'm not saying that I'm this genius, right? Like I'm, I'm not a, I am not, I'm not trying to be like an absolutist. There's no shot. There's, there's no shot. We finish below the Red Sox. The Red Sox are so not good. Like the Red Sox are just not good, right? The Red Sox are not good. They're not, it's not happening. Is Jemai Jones even, Jemai Jones even too good? I think Jemai Jones will make this team. Like I think Jemai Jones will be here. On opening day. So, yeah. What will your... um, 
what will what wait what would your walk-up song be i went with um gasolina for my walkout song as a reliever in high school i would go with um hmm i would do um i would say you know what i would go with um why not by lucky if you guys don't know that song that song's fire. Any chance Chris Bryant gets to play third? No shots the Yankees take on that contract. No chance the Yankees take on that contract. That contract's atrocious. No chance. And he's an injury riddled mess. That'd be a disaster for the Yankees. I don't care. There's no unless the Rockies ate like 90% of this contract, there's no way I would take that deal. None. None. Do you think Trevino gets a start over Wells in opening day? Yes, because Framber Valdez will be on the mound. If Boone gets fired, I see Ausmus taking over. Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm worried our bullpen because of our, our about our bullpen because most of our starters are fly, five and fly types. Yes, I agree. But that's why they have Luke Weaver and Clayton Beater because both those guys can pitch deep into games. They're like starters. They're starters. Like they're, they're guys who can pitch five innings right now for you. Uh, and, and they will be on your roster to help you with. Uh, they're built up to handle it. So, um because they're built up to handle it, they'll they'll give you some uh, much needed depth. So yeah, what do you think this percentage split will be for Trevino and Wells this year? I think it'll be really close to fifty fifty. I think it'll be fifty fifty to open the year, and then um, sixty forty the All Star break, and then seventy five seventy thirty by the by the postseason with Trevino catching cold games. I think Wells should start over Trevino. I agree, but I think that the Yankees need to kind of ease Wells into it because also he's a catcher and you don't want him to get hurt. Just an opening day or most of the season? Uh, most of the season? Yeah, I, I think that Wells, for, for most, should get the majority of playing time. But yeah, it's a, it, it's a catching is different. You're slower with catchers with kind of easing them into stuff. So yeah, you got to ease them into everything. You can't just throw 100 and, 120 starts at the catching position at them. Matt Tomo says, Wells, uh, no, Danny, Donnie Clark says, Matt Tomo, Wells, I think we'll have a huge year this season. If you guys didn't watch my Bold Takes video, you guys should. I talk a little about, about what I have in mind for Austin Wells this upcoming season. I think DJ's done. I can't see him hitting well without injury over a full season again. Hopefully third baseman doesn't become the new left field. Maybe a Bregman trade at the deadline. No shot the Astros are bad enough to trade Bregman, right? Like I just, I don't see it. I really don't. I don't see it. I also don't see them trading him to us. I think he'd go to like the Cubs, trade him to the Cubs, an NL team. Um, So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Hope so. Would love to see. I would love Alex Bregman to clarify. I just don't think it's going to happen. I really like Arias. Would be a good match. Like Ben in top 30 prospects. He fits good on the bench. Yeah, look, Ramon Arias would help the Yankees. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think they'd rather trade... Uh, maybe they'd rather trade Jorge Mateo. I don't know, but I don't think they're going to trade Ramon Arias to the Yankees. I would love to be wrong, though, because I think he's a pretty good... I think he's a pretty good player. You know what I mean? So, yeah. The short porch really help Wells. Absolutely. A trade is coming, big or small, something is coming. Yeah, obvious. Something is very obviously going to happen in the next three or four days. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what he does, what the Yankees end up doing. Um, facts, yeah, no, for sure, that short report's going to help. What are your thoughts on Baseball Reference projecting the Yankees 2024 season winning 20, 71 games? Okay, so it's not a projection; it's a simulation based off of the last 100 games they played in 2000. In, 23. So basically imagine if you took six ERA Nesta Cortez, because he had like a six ERA after April, the worst of Carlos Ordon, the worst of John Carlos Stanton, Anthony Rizzo post concussion, Oswaldo Cabrera, Glaber Tor well, Glaber Torres actually had a good second half. Um, like all of that just slop. Imagine how many guys that slumped in the second half and got hurt and um run that over a hundred games. Yeah, if the Yankees got that outcome, they would lose 71. They would win 71 games. Like if Stanton had like a 70 WR, I think it was let me actually pull up what Stanton had over his final hundred games. Cause I'm pretty sure it was pretty bad. Like I'm fairly confident it was awful. Let's um let's take a nice little looky here. Um and I apologize that I'm like kind of talking your guys' ears off. Oh, well, I guess Stanton played, Stanton did play a hundred game, 101 games, but it's the last a hundred games for the Yankees. So, uh, he missed a good, yeah, he came back basically in June. Well, remember when he was like, when he first, when the Yankees, when the season first started, 
John Carlos Stanton had a 131 WRC plus and 558 slugging percentage. And then he comes back from the IL, hits a home run, which is like, yeah, he hit a home run. And he proceeded to put up an 82 WRC plus the rest of the way. So if John Carlos Stanton put up an 82 WRC plus and Rodon sucked and Cortez sucked, like all that stuff, yeah, the Yankees would, would lose a lot of games. And also it doesn't factor in the Yankees having Juan Soto. So, yeah. Said pencils aren't down, but getting worried right now. No, they're going to make a trade. Like, they're they're going to make a trade. If any moves are made, it's going to be made by tomorrow, tomorrow, tonight or mid-tomorrow probably. Or after the first game of the season, the Yankees were willing to let Foyal be on the roster for one day before they got Franchi Cordero. Talking about Weaver and Beater, how many innings will they pitch this year if they're both serviceable and healthy throughout the year, considering that they'll pitch long relief regularly? How many innings did Johnny Brito pitch last year? That's the answer, probably. <laughs> uh, um, let me see. How many innings did you pitch, Johnny Brito? He tossed 90 to third. I think we'll get 80 out of Weaver and 50 out of 50, 50 out of Bieber beater. Well, I would do what I could to get Donovan from the Cardinals. It will cost a lot, but he's worth it. And guess what? Uh, the Cardinals would also love to have Brendan Donovan. So they are not trading him probably. <laughs> uh, my opinion is that they'll probably let them pitch 120 innings. I don't think the Yankees are going to force them to pitch 120. Uh, and I think ideally they don't actually, because that means that they need to make a lot of starts and it means guys got hurt. Um, so yeah, maybe the Yankees will trade angels will trade their, their third base contract and eat the contract. Yankees will bite. We were not trading for Anthony Rendon. No, 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 no. What are your top opinions on a trade bro- on a trade block that could be that could be better than Cabrera? Um, I don't even know what's out there. Like, I don't know what's available because, like, what's available, what's available, isn't public to us. We don't know who exactly is open for trade. So, um, yeah. Ryan, what trade wouldn't trade? What what trade wouldn't trade for Bieber? I just think the Guardians are going to trade him because he's throwing pretty hard, so they should hold on to him. Yeah, that's kind of where my brain's at. Bieber also has injury issues. They should just hold on to him. The Guardians should wait to see what his value is and then go from there. Is Drury a third baseman? I would love to trade for Brandon Drury. Like I would love, love if the Yankees traded for Brandon Drury because I think he's a better third baseman than Mayhew. Uh, he's not a great defender, but he's a good hitter. It won't happen. The Yankees are not going to get Brandon Drury. They would have to give the Angels somebody that they could play at second. Maybe Luis Renjifo makes more sense. Maybe he's somebody the Yankees could pick up. He had a pretty strong year last year, although he, for some reason, sucks against right-handed pitching. Um, I would love Brandon Drury on the Yankees. So, um, yeah, it's certainly something to look at, for sure. Uh, I'm definitely not opposed to it. I wouldn't be opposed to that for at all, actually. Um, so, yeah. What do we got here? Geo cheap option would do this. I don't think he's going to be traded. Drew is good to the Yankees. He wasn't, but he was, he's good now. Angels have to worry about Rondon. Yeah, they are not trading Brendan Drury, even though I wish and I pray they do. Because if they did and you could play by third base, probably lead off Glaber, go Glaber, Soto, Judge, Rizzo, Drury, Verdugo, Stanton, Wells, Volpe. That's a ball club, folks. How do you feel the Yankees trade for Gio Rochella? Depending on the price, I mean, it's better than nothing. Luis Hifo or Brandon Drew would be good options. Yeah, they'd be fun. Work fifth for Rendon reuniting with his former teammate Soto. Dude, we're not trading for Bra- We're not trading for Anthony Rendon. We're not trading for him. Not happening. He's awful. Uh, so, yeah. Top opinions on, tra- on a trade block if they're better for a career than Cabrera? I just, I don't know who's available. So, I'm just kind of like, you know. Kind of wait and see because let you know it'll be somebody we're not looking at right now. Mike Stone Rendon, yep. How about Hassan Kim? Probably not happening. No Rendon at all. I agree. I am completely out on Anthony Rendon. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't. I would love Hassan Kim, but it's not happening. Top option for the Yankees better than Cabrera men. I mean. Uh, I just don't know who's available. Like, I don't know who's going to be traded for. And I'm not, like, frustrated at you guys. I'm more so frustrated in the sense of, like, 
it sucks because I like being on top of this stuff and I don't really know like an option. Again, I would say like, look at the Phillies. They've got a good bench for that. They kind of have the type of uh, team that you would want to kind of pick out for any potential, um, for any potential, uh, you know, infielders. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Rygod, baby goat. Appreciate you, big dog. Would Warren for Drury be too much, or does that make still make sense? Um, that's a good question. I don't think the Yankees are treating their pitching depth or, or somebody like Warren for Brennan Drury right now. Nor do I think they should, because pitching depth might be a big a big time issue for them. Do I play MLB the show? Um, I have twenty three. I don't have twenty four. So, yeah. Here's that. Um, wouldn't trade Warren for, uh, Drury. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I would not do it. Josh Harrison. I think Josh Harrison's washed, man. I think Josh Harrison is cooked. I think that man, I think that boy washed. Um, now would he be able to help us with depth? Sure. But he's just washed, dude. It's bad. He's washed. He's cooked. He's not good. Like I, Jemai Jones might be better than he is. And like, I feel like if we're talking about, are you like, if you're not clearly better than Jemai Jones, right? He can't even play shortstop anymore. He can play third, can play second. Doesn't really do either great. Yeah, he would be cheap, but he sucks. Yankee signed Josh Donaldson out of retirement. I would, I would say things. Uh, is Adam Frazier a free agent? No, he is with the Kansas City Royals. Although, kind of in hindsight, yeah, he would have been nice to add. Play third. He, could play, oh, he hasn't really played much third in his career. Wasn't great at the second defensively last year. I actually have always liked Adam Frazier. I kind of wanted him in 2021, but it's okay. It's all right. I can live. I'm going to be okay. It'll be okay, guys. Um, I mean, maybe the Royals, like, I mean, he signed a one-year $4.5 million deal. They're not cutting him. He's he's there. He's with him at this point. So, yeah. I know he may be washed, but I've always had a love for Gene Segura. I mean, Gene Segura just hasn't played in spring training. So, like, he's just not an option. He'd be cheap, though. Yeah, but he sucks. Luis Renjifo keeps popping in my head. So, yeah, I think he'd be a great option. Speed, power, fielding a little bit. I would love Luis Renjifo. So, yeah. But I don't think it's a lot of the four mil they threw around to Kike and Ahmed um, because he's not ready. He won't be ready for opening day. That's I, – I know I mentioned that a lot, and I know that that's – you know, it, it, it's one of those, like, that's kind of where it's at right now. So, yeah. He should have just signed IKF. No, they should not have signed IKF. I miss IKF. I do not miss IKF. IKF got too much for his worth. I agree. I don't think IKF's that good. Now, would if you were to if you could give IKF three million dollars to play for the New York Yankees right now, would you do it? Yes, I would do it. One hundred percent, any day of the week, I would do that right now. Like if you could, if IKF was available for three million dollars, yeah, I would. I would, you know, I would obviously be for that because he is um, he is not the worst player in the world. He's okay. He's like a, he's like a, he's a, he's not a, he's a below average major league starter and an okay bench piece. I don't think $6.5 million or $7.5 million is where I would have been shopping for that, but it's not my money. Um, I just don't think the Yankees should have brought him back. Ozzy Yankees do nothing though. I'd say low. I'd like to say low. I'm going to say low. I'm going to hope. I'm going to hope low. I'm going to hope low. Would you sign Luke Voigt? Um, no. I can't complain very well as well, but he's bad. Um, odds the Yankees do nothing. I'd say low. I'm going to say sub 50%. I'm going to say they're going to do something. I'm just not sure what. I can't is better than his wall though. Um, sure. I don't fucking care. <laughs> do you see any roster changes from here to opening day yeah they're gonna add an infielder that's where i'm at three catchers makes no sense ben can't stay yeah they're gonna get rid of him i don't know why everyone loves Voight and sanchez and didn't care for them they had fun years with the yankees that's why um i wish Vic oscar gonzalez made the roster unfortunately can't play the infield so um yeah that's kind of where we're at 
If a trade happens soon, options like Arias, Luis on the Angels or Sosa, I just can't trust Cabrera hitting. That's fair. We'll just have to wait and see, uh, um, and, uh, and we can evaluate from there. Um, but with that being said, you know, we're probably going to wrap up soon. Not really much to talk about outside of the infant situation. We'll, we'll probably go live again tomorrow because we're going to be prepared for if there's a trade. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to uh, stay up to date, obviously send in final questions. If you guys want to stay up to date uh, with everything going on with the New York Yankees, you guys can check us out at Fireside Yankees on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and of course this YouTube page. You guys can also check out Fireside Yankees, uh, EmpireSportsMedia.com for all your favorite New York sports content and written coverage of the Yankees. On top of that, you guys should check out... Um, you guys should also check out what we have going on with Fireside Bets. That's some fun stuff. Links are all in the description. We're going to take some of the final questions here and kind of wrap up from there. Probably go uh, for the next five or so minutes. Think Cash and Howe would sign Bregman if so doesn't come back? Yes, I think they would. Kansas is going to make a great rail rider. Yeah. I hope it proves me wrong, but I just don't think he's good. I think Sosa is so does the Yankee for life. I would agree. Yankees and Mets interested in Monty, maybe possibly. Yeah, the direct report is that there is a price tag that that – they would both be willing to sign Montgomery for that's, that's the report. Um, I'm sure the Yankees number, I'm pretty sure the Yankees number is higher than the Mets number. That's not sourced. I'm just guessing. Uh, Cubs and Phillies was tied to Monty. Yeah. Everyone. I don't know where Monty goes. I don't think it'll be the Yankees. I don't know where he goes. What game are we going to this season at the stadium? TBD. That is TBD folks. We do not know just yet. We're talking about it internally with the boys uh, and the guys and the squad and the people I think Monty still has a bad tra taste trade in his mouth. I think if we gave him the money he's looking for, he would come back. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, with that being said, I'm thank you. I'm really thankful that you guys stopped by with this stuff. Monty with no team two days out is crazy. He's gonna wait till after opening day because then he no longer is. Uh, he can no longer be qualified for the. Um, he can no longer qualify for the. He's no longer gonna get the qualifying offer for the Yankees after. 2020 he cannot get the qualifying offer if he hits for agency after 2024 so um yeah that's where we're at there he's leading Gla Gla glaber lead off opening day isn't that isn't surprising i agree monty signing soon yes i think he'll sign next week that's just a guess though yeah, boris always using his leverage i agree salute ryan good show as always have a good night thank you guys so much for tuning in hope you guys have a great rest of your night and we'll see you guys tomorrow morning and tomorrow night for the live show tomorrow morning because we do all our podcast stuff so Peace out, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Love you all. Bye.